So today I'm going to be talking about a movie that I somehow haven't watched, which is A Clockwork Orange. Probably one of the most famous films ever by Stanley Kubrick. I somehow haven't watched this movie, so I decided to watch it recently. Anyway, let's get into the review, shall we? So A Clockwork Orange takes place in the world's underbelly known as England. Our main character, Alex DeLarge, acting as a kind of criminal, mafia, head boss, gang leader. The film even opens with Alex and his crew beating an old homeless man for no reason at all, which should tell you pretty much the tone that this film is trying to achieve. Another thing about this film is that it's shot unlike any other film I've watched. Everything is shot like a play almost. Everything is always wide shot so you always feel like you're out of the action. Even when action scenes are happening you never actually feel like you're in it with the characters. The camera is always way off in the background so that you can see everything happening but it also makes you feel dissociated from everything that actually is happening. The other camera angle that's most used in this film is a very close up shot of the characters which also makes you incredibly uncomfortable. Close up angle shots are always very uncomfortable to see. You get to see all the little pores and details on a human face, well, as much as you can see on a 1971 camera. The entire film is completely uncomfortable. This movie is two hours long, but it felt like five hours. All the characters in this movie speak like robots, but still have a tinge of human emotion. Everything in the movie is made to make you feel uncomfortable. So the first half of the movie focuses on Alex's life and who he is as a person. Alex lives a relatively normal life with good parents, school, he's well off, he's good with the ladies, but for some reason, Alex still takes part in criminal acts. Even though he's well off, he still steals. Even though he's good with the ladies, he still decides to go out and, you know. But why, really? The movie never gives you a reason as to why Alex is the way he is. The reason why Alex acts the way he is is because that is who he is. Though obviously there's an argument for nature over nurture, but I think this film goes for the nature part more than the nurture. With Alex given no real reason for us to why he acts the way he does. And this becomes integral to the second half of the movie. Because after Dumb and Dumber here decide to betray Alex after one of their heists goes wrong, Alex gets sent to prison. And so this represents a turning point in the film, as this is where the actual meat of the film is really held. As everything before this was more of a setup for everything that comes after it. You really need to get to know Alex as a character and who he is to have a sense of sympathy by the end for the character. So essentially what happens after Alex gets into prison is that he stays there for a good amount of time. During this time in prison, he behaves like a good boy, gathering favor with the rest of the prison inmates and the priest inside the prison. However, afterwards, Alex decides to take part in an experimental procedure, hearing that if you take part in this procedure, they will let you out of prison. The doctors need to subject him to hours of hours of footage of terrible things being committed. All the things that Alex once reveled in. This eventually drives Alex insane and he develops a repulsion to things that he once thought was his normal nature. So much so that even seeing a naked woman makes him feel sick to his stomach. And this is the next theme of the movie. is to take someone's nature, whether that be bad or good, and twist it in a way to where they cannot act upon it. And the question that the movie brings up is, at that point, is Alex human anymore? Does the choices of what you act upon not make you what you are? If you can only act one certain way due to a compulsion forced upon you by others, are you still human? And this further showcase when he's released out of prison and he goes back to his home only to find that another man is sleeping in his bed, acting as the son to his parents, further treating Alex as if he's less than human. Despite being cured, nobody ever treats him like he is cured. They all treat him like he's some kind of animal. His friends reject him, his parents reject him, the homeless people reject him, this homeless guy that ever from the first scene he's come for revenge now. The only person that Alex could rely on was himself, but he doesn't have that now. And be it for better or worse, it's made him less of what he was. Even the people that want to help him don't really want to help him. They only use him for their own selfish desires. Like this old man here, who was a previous victim of Alex's when he was back in his Joker days. He attempts to use Alex as a way to destroy the government for his own political reasoning. The old man does not care for Alex. He only uses Alex as a means to an end puppet or an animal to be controlled in order to achieve their own goals. And this is prevalent throughout the last quarter of the film where after the old man tries to cure Alex for his own gain, Alex attempts to commit suicide. This causes public outrage against the government that attempted to cure Alex in the first place. The government then attempts to control Alex and keep him quiet about what happened in order to sway public opinion. Just like the old man that tried to save Alex for his own selfish reasons. Two sides of the same coin the old man and the government attempt to masquerade with the facade of helping Alex to get better, with, with wanting him to be a better person than who he is, promising to cure him. But in reality, it is all a facade in order for them to achieve their own goals, which leads directly into the last and final theme of this movie, which is control. The control of the public opinion, the control of people, control of criminals, the control of one's own desire. And this is all shown through the character of Alex the Large, your humble narrator. 
which in the end makes Alex DeLarge a very sad character. Anyway, those are my thoughts on the movie, so thanks for listening to me talk. See ya.